arm because you're good at what you do. When a lot of these videos are getting ready to, to actually view, is uh, some videos from maybe about five years ago um, when I was on a project. Uh, it was a pharmaceutical plant. And uh, there was a lot of uh, Schedule 10, 10 inch, 6 inch, 3 inch, things of that nature. And the thing about it was uh, we didn't have real good fitters. Even though a job uh, called for really good welders, uh, really good fitters were scarce. And um, there was a lot of things that, that you see in this video that you may look at and say, what? Why would you ever tack up anything that looked like that? But the reality is, for you guys that's already in the field, you can, you can testify to it that uh, it's never going to be perfect. This is why I stress that you should always practice. Don't never think it's going to be perfect coming out of these well booths and these uh, trade schools here. So, like I said in, in the previous video, practice messing up, if that makes sense. Exactly like I said in the video. See what it looks like. Because in the field, they just want it done. They don't want to hear an excuse. They want you to pull off a miracle. So again, that's just that's just the nature of the game. They're gonna want you to pull off these uh, these miracle type wells. You're gonna complain a little bit, but eventually, as you continue to progress in your career, you're gonna realize, hey, it's not really about making excuses. It's about making the well. So, get what you can get from the videos. Remember, support the sites, mygotomom.com, and you got uh, chrisstanner.com. Stay tuned, stay with me, and we're going to keep getting it. This is Schedule 10. Schedule 10 pipe. And as you can see, that's about a quarter inch gap on Schedule 10 pipe. Don't be in them test boots thinking it's gonna be a walk in the park. So you better be practicing because as you can see, that's a quarter inch gap on Schedule 10. Purge, gotta be right. It can be done. Stay tuned to the website and I'm gonna show you how I do it. I'm going to teach you the techniques, but we're about to go to lunch, and we'll catch y'all on the flip side. Let's look at that roof. Quarter inch gap, baby. That's what I call a hot day, baby. Now let's check out some more clips of some old throwback videos, things that uh, I feel like it's important for you to know. Okay, so let me explain this with this 1 8 wire. This is a 1 8 wire right here. And again, you got a tight gap here. It's less than a 16th. And then you got a little bit tighter than an eighth here. So, being that this wire right here, this 1 8 wire. Now listen to me now. This 1 8 wire right here. Which one's thicker? This 1 8 wire or this razor feather edge? The razor feather edge is a lot thicker thinner than this 1 8 wire. So, with that being said, if the 1 8 wire melts, don't you think this feather edge is gonna melt? So, don't worry about the fact that this gap is that tight on this Schedule 10 pipe. As long as this 1 8 wire melt, you gotta know that it's melting this feather edge. And if you got a, any slight of a gap in between your Schedule 10 bevels, it's going to fall right in. Either you're going to have a flush root or it's going to have a little bit of a little bit of a convex look to it. And that's how you want it. Convex meaning you got a little, pen uh, a little penetration. Convex meaning you got a little penetration. Concave meaning you got a little suck back. So, Rule of thumb, remember that. Schedule 10 is really easy to weld. 
as long as your wire is melting and you got a razor edge, what they call feather edge, just lay it right on the bevel, go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you're gonna find out that your root's gonna look really slick. You gotta know your craft because again, it's just metal. So you can always manipulate metal, whether it's uh, the fact that you cut your heat up or cut it down. So in this case, in order for me to put a decent root in this, I'm gonna use a 1 8 wire and I'm gonna crank the heat up to about uh, anywhere from 65 to 70 amps. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lay that wire right on top of this tight gap here. I'm gonna strike the arc, I'm gonna start the puddle, then I'm gonna lay the wire right in the puddle and I'm gonna go over the wire. You can go side to side, but I, with a tight gap like that, I don't necessarily want to go side to side. I go back and forth, right over the wire, back and forth. A back and forth motion. Back and forth motion. Back and forth motion. And it's not a really fast motion, it's just a, just like I'm doing here. Back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And as you get to the wide gap area, you can still go back and forth, but you're gonna to wanna to push your wire. Just push a little bit. As you go back and as you go forward, you wanna slide the wire forward a little bit because it's gonna to wanna to try to keyhole on you. Or if you don't feel safe with that technique, you can just cut the, the amps down and bridge it or just keyhole it. And these are techniques I'm not sure if you too familiar with, but just stay tuned to the website, christanner.com, and uh, the techniques will be up there for you to grab. But uh, yeah, it's real important that you know these things because again, in the field, it's no joke. And again, these are things that you must know. A lot of this stuff you won't know and you won't necessarily learn in your trade school because one or two things. Your instructor don't know. He never been in the field. Or you just fail to pay attention to what people are telling you. So I'm gonna put a purge on it. One more thing is really important to have a decent purge. Whenever you're doing or whenever you're getting ready to to make your weld on something similar to this right here, maybe the situation might be the same. You wanna have a good purge. You want that purge to read 0 0.7 on your oxygen analyzer. Okay? You want it to be down to 0 0.7. That way, you won't have to worry about any um, sugaring or any weird stuff like that happening. But yeah, these are really important things you must know. It's just kind of unfortunate that sometimes in the field, you realize that uh, the fitters are, are pretty much dying out. They're not around like they used to be. So it'd be in your best interest to learn your trade, practice, practice, practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Practice and practice and practice or practice 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 oh practice 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 I practice and practice 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 and a good thing to do um whenever you're practicing practice messing up see what it looks like to mess up see what you can do and what you can't do that's the number one thing that's what I did when I was learning back in the day, I cut the heat up. I see what it, what the pipe or the plate looked like to mess up. I cut it all the way up to 170 and try to walk the cup. Then you say, "Damn, that that's you know that that looks crazy." Then you cut it down, go really cold, and you see what that looked like. Then you get your mid temperature, and then you see what that looked like. You begin to learn uh, learn the metal and how it flows. And that's just that's just a little key point. So, you gotta stay focused, stay training, stay learning, stay tuned.